I didn't realize until today actually changed everything in my entire life. And she's the reason for it. So I talk a lot about mental health. I talk a lot about depression. I talk a lot about anxiety. I talk a lot about how I cured myself. <laughs> I can say that because it's about me. I cured myself of depression, anxiety. I had been diagnosed bipolar by several doctors over my life. Um, and I can honestly say that I no longer have those symptoms at all. <laughs> and I want to tell you how and why. I haven't really talked about this at all on any of my YouTube content. And I realized that today that I talk about this to people that I know closely, but I don't talk about this like openly to people that I feel like maybe, I don't know, like maybe wouldn't understand. So today's the day that I'm going to talk about it because actually this is the hidden gem to how I really changed my life. So about two and a half years ago, I hit a breaking point. Those of you guys that know my journey know that I had been dealing with like a rare and curable eye disease that like causes people to lose their vision. And about um, two and a half years ago, I had a doctor's appointment that changed everything in my life. I realized that I potentially could not have vision like very, very soon, like in a year or two. And I had a nervous breakdown. Um, that nervous breakdown led me a lot of different ways, but one of the first stops in my journey of having this nervous breakdown was I met with a woman that a lot of my family members have gone to. Um, she's not a, let's just say I met with this woman. She's been like kind of a mentor to a lot of people in my family. And I went to this session with her and to be honest with you, I didn't really feel like I got that much out of the session. But one thing that she did mention to me, I didn't realize until today actually changed everything in my entire life. And she's the reason for it. So I told her that I had been wanting to do plant medicine. I had wanted to do ayahuasca and I had known about ayahuasca for probably like 10 years. My, like my aunt who I just like looked up to so much um, who had recently passed away, like she had done ayahuasca and it had changed her life. Like she had always dealt with mental health issues, all of that. And so I was like, so sure, like, oh, if I do ayahuasca, it is going to change my life and cure my depression, anxiety, all this stuff, because I just had heard that a lot from a lot of different sources. So anyways, so I go to this appointment, the session with this woman that's like worked with a lot of people in my family, aunts, uncles, cousins, my dad, whatever. So I go and sh I tell her that I want to do ayahuasca. And she tells me that she's like, Hey, before you do that, I think you need to do this other thing. And it was something that I had never heard about before. It was called, um, a Vipassana retreat. And she started to kind of tell me that it basically is like, a nine day silent meditation retreat. She didn't really go into like much detail, but she was like, I don't even think she had done one before, but she was like, look, I think that you should do this before you consider doing ayahuasca or plant medicine. She's like, there's a location and like a city that is literally 10 minutes from where my family like lives. Um, it's like out in the country in Texas. She's like, there's a, a location that's about an hour from Texas or about an hour from Dallas where I was living. And she's like, I think you need to do this. So I, um, I decided that I was going to try to do that. I was going to go to this Vipassana retreat meditation center. And oh, the other thing was that, that this is free. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, you're telling me that don't do uh, plant medicine or ayahuasca just yet. And mind you, like going on retreats to do that is thousands of dollars, sometimes like $10,000 to do an ayahuasca retreat in Costa Rica, for instance, which is what pretty much the majority of people tell you that's like the only way you can do it, which I find out later is not true. Um, 
But yeah, so she tells me, don't do plant medicine ayahuasca yet. Do a Vipassana retreat. And all it is is silent meditation. And oh, by the way, it's free. So I'm like, okay, I guess I need to do this Vipassana. So I look up the website for the Vipassana retreat. Like I said, there was one like an hour from where I lived. It's actually 10 minutes from where all my family lives. And I'm like, this is perfect. Oh my gosh. And I look and this retreat is like on a wait list for like eight months. And I'm like, okay, this makes sense. Like this is a free thing that apparently is going to help me. Um, and I trust this woman that told me about it. So I'm like, okay, cool. So I, at this point was, my plan was to do an ayahuasca ceremony in Dallas. And then I was going to go to Thailand for, I didn't know when, how long. So I do my ayahuasca experience. It was like really um, insightful. I go to Thailand. While I'm in Thailand, I am at a yoga teacher training on an island, like a small island. And I keep running into people that are talking about Vipassana retreats. And I didn't really realize that a Vipassana retreat was something that is kind of all over the world. I didn't realize that it was kind of an ancient um, practice, that it's been practiced for thousands of years. Like, I had no idea. I thought that just this, like, random woman that my family knows um, that I did a random session with one time told me about it and that that center in Texas was, like, the only place to do it at. So... I was really shocked when I got to Thailand and I'm in yoga teacher training on the other side of the world. And all these people are talking about how life-changing Vipassana retreats are. So I talked to some of my teachers at my yoga teacher training. Um, it just kind of gets brought up about this center that's on the island called Indriya that is a Vipassana center and that you can kind of just show up at the beginning of one of the retreats. And if they have space, they let you in. If they don't, they don't. So I'm like, oh my God, this is perfect. This is like, I've been wanting to do a, a Vipassana retreat, but the one that's in Texas where I live is all, like booked up. Like I had been kind of checking on it for several months and it's always booked up for like six months, eight months out. So I decided while I was in Thailand that I was going to go to a Vipassana retreat. And and when I say that the Vipassana is free, it's actually donation based, which if you don't have money, it's like you can give a donation in other ways. So I say all that to say that I decided to go to the Vipassana retreat in Drea in Thailand, in Copenhagen, and um, the they requested like a specific donation, which I think I don't even know. Maybe it was like a hundred bucks. I have no idea. But it's a nine day retreat. You have food, housing and all of the magic that happens there. So I get one of my friends that I had met, Isa, at my yoga teacher training, and she decides she's going to go with me. So we have no idea what to expect at all. All we know is it's nine days, we have to bring bedding, and it's a meditation retreat. That's all we know. So we get to Andrea the night before the retreat starts, and it's basically... There are like 10 like shack looking things. We're in the jungle, mind you. We're like on an island in the jungle. And so there's just like 10 little shacks that are maybe like nine feet. No, I'm sorry. They may be nine feet by nine feet. They're like little tiny small rooms just with two beds and not even a mattress. Like they are twin size beds with like a like hard pallet of um, like for your mattress, like it's not comfortable at all. So we show up to this retreat and it is, um, we're like, oh my God, we're in the jungle and these shacks that have no space, no mattress, there's no AC. I, there was one light bulb, I think at the top of the ceiling, but, um, this center was just like super bland, like, super, super bland. And we're like, oh my God, what did we sign up for? But we had been told by all these people that we met, like people we respected a lot, kind of elder, like people had told us a Vipassana retreat is going to be life-changing. So we have, we get to this center. We have no idea what to expect. It's, we're just like, this is weird. Um, so basically we get to our Vipassana retreat and 
day zero, we're kind of like, what's going on? Day one happens and um, everybody kind of starts to get there and the silence begins. So during this retreat, you can't speak. You can't look at anybody in the eye. Um, you are just supposed to be with yourself. And so day one starts and all of this begins. Like we are now silent. Um, mind you, we don't have a cell phone. We don't have books. We're not allowed to work out. We're not allowed to write like journal or anything. We're literally just supposed to be with ourself. So this Vipassana retreat, when I tell you, opened up my eyes to like everything in life. Like so many people are like, I, you're so wise or like you've had so much personal growth or like you're not struggling with depression and anxiety anymore. It's because of this Vipassana retreat. Like I saw them. It's funny because like everybody that I met that was telling me about Vipassana retreats, they all would talk really highly of it. Like you won't meet somebody who's completed a Vipassana retreat who won't tell you what I'm telling you, that it is absolutely life-changing. But it's funny because every single person that will tell you this, they can't tell you exactly why it's life-changing, but they'll just tell you that you need to do it if you feel called to do it. And I'm going to say that now that everything I learned during my Vipassana retreat has shifted and changed everything in my life. I have realized how much all of the chatter in my head caused so much dysfunction in my life. I learned that through meditating for 14 hours a day for eight days straight. All of the chatter in my head was creating my own anxiety, my own depression. Um, it was creating me to make poor decisions. It was creating me to have relationships with people that I shouldn't have relationships with. It was, it was creating like all of this stuff that I never realized before that I, that everything that I want in my life, who I want to be, things that I want to obtain or receive, like all of this, like all of my unhappiness and all of my suffering all started inside of me, literally. And I learned that during my Vipassana retreat. I can't tell you exactly like how, because this all manifests differently for other people, but I promise you, go to a Vipassana retreat, be stripped of everything, stripped of your like social capabilities, um, stripped of the comfort of having like a C or a comfortable bed or like our specific center, we had cold showers every day, um, stripped of having great food. We had very bland food. Like we basically were stripped of everything pleasurable, everything distracting. We were stripped of everything. And when I tell you that during my Vipassana retreat, and the first couple of days, I was like, oh, this is really nice. Like, I really needed this reset. Then there were days um, after that that I was like, oh, my God, I figured out everything. Like, I totally get it now. Um, then there were days after that that I was angry, that I'm like, oh, my God, like, what am I doing here? Who are these people? All of this, like, all these people are crazy. I'm crazy. Um I had feelings that I like wasn't doing it right and that I wanted to give up, that it was pointless. Like, and then after that wave, wave like went away, then I got to this place of absolute pure bliss. I literally remember sitting on my like little stairs leading up to like my little shack <laughs> and I was just looking through the garden and every single moment was so beautiful and so perfect because I literally had nothing to distract me. I had no stories in my head. My brain was clear for the first time in my entire life because at this point I had been meditating for 14 hours a day, like for six or seven days straight at this point. So I was looking through the garden and I was walking slowly. And mind you, it's not just me. I was like observing all the other members of the retreat, like they 
we all kind of got there in the same energy, like excited, wondering what we were going to unpack. And then like everybody through the week kind of seemed like agitated or irritated. And then like towards the end, you kind of saw everybody have the same energy. People were walking slowly through the garden. People were like intently looking at flowers or looking at a tree. Like we were just being present because we had no distraction. We had no stories in our head. We had no worries in the world because we were so disconnected from all of that, all of those pieces of us. And that's when I really had a, I broke down and I realized that I had been living life so wrong this whole time. Like the things, the messages that I received during my meditations, like I realized how much I had really been the cause of all the stuff that had gone wrong, in my opinion, in my life. And, um, I was just so, so sad, but I also was like in this, the most blissful freeing place that I had ever been that I realized like how limitless life can be and that I really am the creator of my entire experience. And I learned all of that through sitting at a nine day, all of that plus a lot more, but for the sake of this video, I learned all of this at a nine day silent meditation retreat where I meditated for 14 hours a day, every day. And I don't ever really talk about this to people um, unless I know them closely. But this is the thing that changed my entire life. Like I had done plant medicine. I have read all, not all the books, but I've read a lot of books. I've gone to retreats. I've gone to seminars, like I've done energy work, like Reiki healing, like breath work, like I've done all these things. But, uh, and mind you, those are like the holistic stuff. I've gone to different therapists. I've been on medication. I've gone to holistic chiropractors. I've done detoxes. Like I've literally done all this stuff and, um, like traditional medicine and non-traditional like approaches. And when I tell you that going to this Vipassana retreat, was the most life-changing experience I will probably ever experience. Um, I want to tell you guys about that because so many people come to me and they're like, I'm struggling with depression or anxiety. And I just want to tell them that this is not, uh, this is not easy. This is very hard to overcome, but it's actually really, really simple. And all of it begins and ends with ourselves. And that is such a hard concept for people to understand. But I learned all of that from going to a donation-based Vipassana retreat. And these retreats are all over the world. You don't have to be able to travel. You don't even really need that much time. They're traditionally nine days um, and they are traditionally supposed to be donation-based. So when somebody tells you, when I voice about how I cured my depression and anxiety through meditation, it's because of going to that Vipassana retreat. Those of you guys that are like, I've tried meditation before, it didn't do anything. I can promise you, unless you have gone to a Vipassana retreat, you have not intentionally sat with yourself and sat with the practice the way that Vipassana students have. And that's probably why you haven't seen That's probably why you haven't seen what I've seen. Let me know in the comments if you've considered going to a Vipassana retreat. <laughs> That's all I can say because yeah, let me know. If you want to look up Vipassana retreats, there are a lot, but if you go to dharma.org, there is like a search engine for different retreats all over the world. Let me know in the comments your experience with meditation. Have you considered a Vipassana retreat? I want to know.